Before we begin, you'll need to have access to the web dashboard, which is your center of operations. If you don't have a login, you'll need to activate your account. Look for an email from Clover asking you to confirm your email address. The web dashboard gives you access to everything from inventory to reports. And it's cloud-based, so you can access your business from any internet browser. Your data also syncs in real time with your Clover devices and apps. Your business information, including your name, address, and phone number, are displayed on your payment receipts. To be sure this information is up to date, log into the web dashboard, then go to Setup and Business Information. Selecting the correct time zone ensures your business data has the right dates and timestamps no matter where you view it. You can also showcase your logo on payment receipts. Just add it here. If anything changes in the future, you'll want to come back to keep your business information up to date. To learn more about setting up, go to clover.com slash help. The Employees tool lets you create employee profiles, assign roles and permissions, and manage employee access to your Clover devices. Let's create profiles for your staff first. In the web dashboard, click Employees, then Add New Employee. Fill out the employee name and assign the appropriate role to each person. Typically, you'll assign the employee role unless the person is a manager or an admin. The other fields are optional, but depending on how you run your business, they might be useful. Passcodes, for example, allow staff to unlock your Clover devices and let you view reports per worker. You can create your own unique code for each employee or accept the unique passcode the system assigns when you select Save. Let's move on to Permissions under Employees. This is a list of all the different types of activities and functions you can grant to your personnel, depending on the role. For people in the employee role to handle checkout, you'll want to give them access to Register. Find Access Register in the list here and be sure the employee role is checked for the Access Order's permission. When you're done, select Save. To issue refunds, click the pencil icon for that permission and select the employee role. To learn more about setting up, go to clover.com slash help. Clover reports help keep you in the know about how your business is doing. To align reports with your preferences, we'll set up your reporting in the web dashboard. Select Setup and Reporting to sync your reports with the time your business day starts. You can also choose when to report a sale, whether at the time of payment or at the time of order. The Removed Items report shows any items that were removed from open orders and the employee that removed them. You can enable this report here. To learn more about setting up, go to clover.com slash help. Let's get your business ready to take customer orders and payments. From the web dashboard and your Clover device, we'll set up everything you'll need, from taxes to menu of services. One of the most important things you'll want to do as a business is set up taxes. Go to Setup, then Taxes and Fees. Here, you can enter your local tax rate as the default or specify any other taxes you're required to collect. If you plan to always ask for tips, go to Setup, then Tips, and check the Ask for Tips box. You can also set suggestions for tip percentages. Select where to display your tips prompt, either on the printed payment receipt or the signature screen on your Clover device. This is a setting you can control only on your Clover device. Go to Setup and select Tips. Here, you'll also choose whether to have your tips calculated with or without taxes. To add your services, you'll use the Inventory tool on either your Clover device or the web dashboard. It will sync across all devices. Now let's build your menu of services by adding individual items. We'll cover the main components for building your inventory, including categories, 
labels, and items. We recommend setting up categories first. In inventory, select categories and then add new category. Categories help you more easily find items in register. They're also useful when you need to group items in your reports. Next, we'll cover labels. In Inventory, click Labels and add new label. Labels help you keep track of how your business is doing, send orders or receipts to the right printer, and pull reports that simplify tax reporting. For instance, you might have operations with separate revenue class accounting, such as dry cleaning and tailor services, or services and products. Okay, we're ready to create your items. In Inventory, click on Items, and add new item. Fill out the fields you need, and since you've already set up categories and labels, you can simply select them in the drop-down menus. To set your order preferences, let's go to Setup, then Orders. Select Order Notes if you'd like employees to take special instructions for an order and print them on the order receipt. To group identical items so they look organized and register, select this checkbox. You'll also save paper with shorter receipts. Under Setup and Order Types, you can create order types, such as Salon and On Location. You'll be able to sort by order type in the Orders tool and group by order type in your reports. Next, go to Setup and Payments to select the type of payments you'll accept. You can also decide if you want to enable offline payments when the network connection is down. To learn more about setting up, go to clover.com help.